Greetings, everyone. We are live again. Dynasty Mayor Search for Huru. Thank you so much for joining us, as we always do. We just want to thank you all for the support. Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Again, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Also, go to DynastyMirror.com. Go to DynastyMirror.com. Uh, while you're there, please subscribe to the email list. And then uh, upcoming tour, we are going to Sierra Leone April 20th. Actually, we're leaving on the 20th. Uh, we're turning on the 29th, Sierra Leone. Come and join us in Sierra Leone, everyone. Come and join us. If you're interested, go to DynastyMirror.com and send me a message. Without further ado, we have Congressman Bimbo Daromola on with us today, all the way from Nigeria. And uh, we're, we're going to be discussing a realistic approach to a one Africa. Again, a realistic approach to a one, to a united Africa. Now, some people might say that's a pipe dream, but then some people say, <laughs> but then some people. <laughs> <laughs> but some people say that is is possible, uh, and with the um, you know obviously you have ECOWAS, which you know is supposed to encourage open borders amongst um, several uh, African nations. Then now we have the free trade uh, area for Africa, um, and then also too, and, and, and maybe uh, Mr. Um, Dalamola, you could um, speak on this as well. The Echo, I thought the Echo was supposed to be out already. The uh, the currency, the echo. Uh, so, you know, there are people are, you know, there's initiatives that are bridging and, and, and attempting to create that one Africa. But, you know, let's let, let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation. Uh, Mr. Daramola, go ahead. Oh, Congressman Daramola, go ahead. Uh, introduce yourself to the people and, you know, let's jump right into it. Well, um, thank you very much, Prince. Um, it's nice talking to you and being on your show this evening. Um, I, I see the good work you're doing, and I think I need to commend that before starting out. My name Thank is Congressman you. Bimbo Dara. Yeah, my name is Congressman Bimbo Dara Mola. I am a Nigerian. I'm an African, and um, um, I was in the Parliament, Nigerian Parliament, the lower house, as it's so-called, um, the House of Representatives from 2011 to 2015. I was a presidential head from 2000 to 2004. And then um, I also went back to parliament as an administrative staff to the last assembly, the, the assembly for the last, the um, eighth assembly, I was the chief of staff to the deputy speaker. But beyond everything else, I am um, an African to the core. I'm a Pan-African. I'm, I'm one of the later day Pan-Africanists in my mind, ostensibly because of uh, a number of things. I go back in, back in time. And our historical perspectives commend to us why we must work so hard to ensure that the labels of our heroes past does not go back to ruins. We have a lot to gain if Africa fulfills and meets the dream of our forefathers. And we have everything to lose if Africa goes into, smith into smithereens or go into splinters as it is today. I honestly can't understand why we can't profile solutions to our problems. One of the things we talked about is the eco as a currency. But before we start talking about the economic details and the economic perspective, I honestly think that what is most important is for all of us to first and foremost contextualize this journey and ask ourselves, where are we coming from? A lot of people have propounded the theory of, um, yes, um, Africa has been divided or Africa was divided by the uh, colonial masters. But now the colonial masters are long gone. What are we doing with our heritage? And um, one of the things that, you, that should inspire, and not only inspire us, that we should draw strength and, and um, energy from, is the fact that a number of people, a number of our forefathers on this continent, have done everything. Some of them have paid the ultimate price because they believe that in one united Africa will be the solution to all of the continental challenges that we have. Um, because we have not connected the dots, we have not related to what these forefathers have invested. People have come from everywhere. And I'll give you a quick example. Brooklyn Institution, um, in, uh, in 2019, for instance, decided just 
right through the xenophobic attacks, one of the xenophobic attacks in South Africa, decided to hold another economic event without recourse to the fact that we must be alive first and foremost before we start talking about the economic potentials. And I've said it at different times. It's going to be second slavery, second bondage, second round of exploitation. If Africa really nearly seeds our pan-Africanism, our togetherness to economic realities. If people keep talking about taking benefits out of Africa, and not talking about the unity of Africa, then that attempt to, to navigate or to push us in the direction of economic development at the expense of our togetherness will not be sincere. So what we have done, um, at, at, I mean, by as an NGO, I had an NGO titled uh, More United Africa. What we've done until COVID stopped, in our, stopped us in our track was to go back in time and to put our building blocks together again, to try to put our building blocks again together and see how we move on from there. Now, Nigeria has the largest black population on the planet. And many are yes. saying that Nigeria should take the lead in regards to this one United Africa. What role is Nigeria playing in, in uniting Africa? Well, in the days of um, Major General Joe Garba, the first um, um, permanent representative of Nigeria to United Nations, at independence, our economic diplomacy, the thrust of Nigerians' economic diplomacy was to be the big brother on this continent. And we tried to do that without, uh, and this is not about trying to hide what we have done as Nigerians or what this nation has done. Nigeria has done so much for the continent of Africa. We've been, uh, we've been there for our, uh, our brothers during war. We've been there during famine. We've been there all through a number, number of situations. But it looks like all of those, those efforts and those interventions have not been properly choreographed and the interventionist approach has not yielded as much as it should have. And I've said it at different times. If Kwame Nkrumah were to look back today, what will he have to say about Africa? What do you think he would say? Uh, it would be the same. I mean, he probably want to, he probably have another attack. Right. If, if Nelson Mandela, who died maybe more recently, oh my, that's one of the things you're talking about. That's power outage in Nigeria. <laughs> Nigeria. <laughs> That's one of the things you're talking about. So um, <laughs> if you give me like like five minutes, I'm gonna put tell them to put on the generator and I'll be back okay. on. Then we'll run this show on my generator. Uh, no five problem. minutes. No problem. No, no right. problem. No problem. Thank Guys, you. Hit that, All right. Hit, sure. that, uh, hit that hit that like button, you guys, as you come to the chat room again. Please hit that like button. Uh, again, the uh, topic is a realistic approach to a one Africa. Again, a realistic approach to a one Africa. Um you know, what we'll do here in about, uh, we'll say 30 minutes, uh, we'll open up the lines. You guys are more than welcome to call in and ask uh, Congressman uh, Daramola a, a question. Um, let's see here. There is no United Africa. Well, I mean, hey, again, we're we're moving in that direction. I think. I th Nobody. Uh, Congressman, are you are you good to go, or you need a couple more minutes? Um, are you are you are you good to go? Hello. Yeah, here. Can you hear me? Carry on. Okay. Okay. I can hear you now. Can you or you can't? I hear you clearly. You can't hear me. I hear you fine. Um, I hear you fine. I'm trying to get back. Okay. Can you hear me? Uh, I hear you fine. 
to me. Amen. I can't connect. Hello? Yeah, I, hear you. Can, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I hear you just fine. Yeah, I hear you just fine. All right, yeah, I froze up on me. Thank you, froze. Good opening. I think this needs you. Uh, are we using it? Guys, hit that like button. Sorry, I apologize for the uh, technical difficulties. We're uh, we are getting it together here. Let me see something real quick. Uh, get the focus. All right, there we go, man. Congressman, you might have to log off and log back on. Maybe, maybe uh, click the uh, affiliate. I mean, click the link again. Guys, again, I apologize about the. Uh, Apologize about technical difficulties. Maybe you have to click the. Oh, there we go. Okay, we all lost. Can it be because of? Okay, can can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, okay, okay. Hello. Hey, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Good. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. I can hear you now. Yeah. Hear me now, okay. Good. All right, perfect. All right, so you. We left off on uh, Kwame Nkrumah. That's where we left off. Right. So um, a lot of people have invested their time and um, probably their life. And if people had that vision at that time, the minimum we can do at this time is to connect the dots and see how well we, the guys who belong in the generations coming after them, can go back and dust the history books, the historical perspective that was added over and over to us should commend to us how we deal with the idea of Pan-Africanism. How does it make you feel that Ghanaians next door are beginning to get xenophobic about Nigerians? How does it make you feel that an evil Shaka Chaka left South Africa and went to Uganda and couldn't perform? Mm. How does it make you feel that shows were canceled between um, Johannesburg, uh, Johannesburg because two guys just got into a brawl with themselves? Mm -hmm. Make no mistakes about it. When we started our foundation, the One United, Found One United Africa Project, we came out, we came just felt that this shouldn't go on for, this, this has gone on for too long. And we believe very strongly that the future of Africa is imperiled if we do not fight back now. We are already too late because generations are beginning to roll over themselves. So much so that not too many people in their 30s, not too many people within the 30s bracket could tell you what or who a Kwame Nkrumah was, right. who a Steve Biko was, who a Jobo Kenyatta was, who, who an Iyere was. Now, let me connect and relate this to our present day reality. Mm. COVID is busy taking people, taking Africans out. Maybe not as many, as many people as in the West and all of that. But the truth of the matter is that we can mitigate that if we imbibe the essence and the principles and the fine details of Pan-Africanism. We have an institution in Senegal that should have benefited from funding to compel them to do enough research after Ebola. What did, you do, what did we do with it? Today, we look up to what they say in China, or what they say in the United States or in the UK mm -hmm. to determine the fate and fortunes of Africa. 
They say all these nice, sweet things about Africa, how blessed Africa is. But it's more than obvious today, or it should be more than obvious to an average African now, that our solution can only come back and come out of this continent. Are you aware of what Melissa Gates said, the wife of uh, Bill Gates, that Africans, that if COVID begins to rage on the continent of Africa, the Africans will be dropping like chickens on the streets. How does that make you feel as an African? And people are hopping around and jumping around and talking about echo the currency when lives are threatened. A senator, a former senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, went to Kenya. And in Kenya, he, I mean, as pleasant as, Ken, as Kenyans are, you, I mean, people started with some snide remarks. And that's where it starts from. How, listen, I had the privilege of meeting President Mandela, Madiba, before he died. Mm -hmm. When I was, when I was at President, when I was the biographer of President Lucia Gobasanjo, I went to take perspectives from Madiba in South Africa. And I know what he said. He, he took me like a grandson. And at that time, he tried to match make me with the, sec with the secretary at the time. People couldn't see who, I mean, the vision that the Kwame Nkrumah has had rising for, listen, at that meeting, the last meeting in 1945 in United Kingdom, Kwame Nkrumah said, let everybody now go back that Africa is right for independence. Mm -hmm. And that's why all, virtually all the nations had their independence around late 50s, early 60s, and all of that. The commitment to this continent by the present-day leadership of this continent, the continental leadership as we have it today, exemplified by the president, have not given due difference and respect to what those forefathers of this continent did for us. And that is why today we cannot even advance the common cause and the common interests of Africans. Check the global production level of Africa as a continent on anything and see whether we have done enough for ourselves. Check the GDP of this continent and see whether a continent of 1.4 billion people should be at this level. While talking to you a while back now, the power, in, the power went out. Right. The challenge of energy is not limited to Nigeria. Regrettably so that the biggest, the largest continent, the largest black nation on the world, on the right. continent, and even in the world, is still facing this challenge. But make no mistakes about it except South Africa, and maybe Botswana, and maybe one or two others. This continent is largely challenged on all fronts. We can feed ourselves, our people's health challenged, public infrastructure badly run down. And so we feel that all of these challenges, we must have a way of getting this leadership. The current core, they don't even visit themselves beyond having the AU meetings. Once mm. they finish with their AU meetings, that is the end of it. And you find institutions like Brooklyn coming out of New York, coming to host investment summits in Africa. In 2019, over, over 15 investment summits were, you know, I mean, happened on the continent of Africa. Not one of them about the welfare and the unity of Africans. So that is second slavery. That is taking Africa back into bondage. I do not see the sincerity of having investment summits on the continent of Africa at the expense of the unity of Africans. Let's say we have a question in the chat room. Uh, let's see here. Um, do, 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 do. What is Nigeria's position on France still holding 14 West African countries on? Uh, in hostage until this day. Pardon me? Uh, what, what, what is Nigeria's position on France still holding 14 West African countries uh, on, on, on in, in bondage until th this day? 
I didn't get your question. Okay, what is Nigeria's position on France? Nigeria's position still holding Niger fourteen West African countries in bondage until this day. How 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 can anybody possibly say that Africa Nigeria is holding uh, fourteen countries in bondage? How? No 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 no. What's Nigeria's position? You know, uh, France still could uh, is oh France. France holding fourteen. West African countries and bondage through their state. Oh, okay, fine. That's the uh, francophone countries. Right. Right. Well, again, this bothers on the fact that when we started, let me give you a, let me give you a perspective that I also have heard, and then uh, a number of people have exercised that that kind of fear when we started World United Africa. Somebody, some of the people that we have met, said to me that the philosophy of one United Africa may be a long shot in the dark. Because we can say all of these nice things, but how well are we going to get the Anglophone countries and the Francophone countries to see the central theme of an Africa? So if the Francophone countries begin to feel that they must continue to pay homage, even as independent nations, so France, how can we possibly, how can the Anglophone countries in court, led by Nigeria, how can we possibly stand in, stand in gap for that? And today, thank God that an ambassador, House of, uh, I'm, I think it's Conakry, the lady ambassador, who blew the lead on that fraternity. And today, that, left, that, that, that um, arrangement seems to be threatened. People have said a number of things about if those nations pull out of that arrangement, the economy of France will be in crisis. I believe so. Right. So, to the best of my knowledge, I think when we adapt ourselves and connect the dots, that is the only time we can begin to engage ourselves in that constructive discussion about our brothers, the Francophone nations, to see that I mean, if you go to Togo today or Republic of Benin, I am not too sure that those economies are doing as well to the optimum as they should. No. Right. So, but you see, the point is that one thing that everybody can take a pie of a, a pie, a piece of that pie is the pan African. When listen, when the idea of 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 um, world United Africa as couched in Pan-Africanism started. Leopold the Senghor was a part of it. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the tongue, whether it was French or not, Kwame Nkrumah did not have to recognize Francophone Africa. It was one united Africa. How did we allow things to slip to the point where not only have we allowed ourselves to be divided and carved into all kinds of nations, 54 of us, by the West? And now we have further subdivided ourselves into two broad categories for exploitation. The moment, we, the moment anybody realizes that there's a crack, we have made ourselves more vulnerable. So we should look beyond our thumb. And then, and I know that at the level of ECOWAS, that discussion is going on to the extent that, yes, people will respect nations with sovereignties, in the independent sovereignties. I mean, there's mutual respect for themselves. But the truth of the matter is that there's also the common cause and common interest of the continent of Africa that should prevail over above any other consideration. Uh, what, do you think, what, what are your thoughts on the Africa free trade area? Well, again, for me, I believe that we need to first and foremost pray. Yeah. If, you have, if, you, if you have a family that is badly divided, and you're talking about prosper, mutual prosperity, how are you going to achieve that? Some yeah. things will be, some things, yeah. We cannot begin, I mean, the idea of economic, all of these economic um, uh, postulations and agreements and um, perspectives will only try only if we have to recognize the fact that the mutuality of our Africanness, let me put it like that. When I, I do you, okay, fine. Let me give you a very simple example. 
How do you preach economic prosperity when a Nigerian finds the economic climate in South Africa or in Kenya very hostile? Mm, right, okay. It's, going, it's, 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 it's given that, right. and I've said it I've, at, at different meetings, I've said, like, I mean, it's a, it's a paraphrase, the part of the Bible that says, Seek ye first the kingdom of the unity of Africa. Every other thing shall come from it. Right. If we can, did you see some of those gory pictures of machetes, of people yeah. wielding machetes? Right. So, I mean, people can't even stream those gory pictures. How do you, be, how do you begin to talk about economics and prosperity? Let me tell you. There are in the entire continent of Africa, the corporations, the corporations here are less than 15. All right. The telcos, maybe MTN. MTN is just in about 15 or 20 nations. Mm -hmm. UBA, right. a bank, a, a, a Nigerian bank, is probably right. in 20 banks. Echo Bank is in maybe, Echo Bank is in less than 20. Access Bank is led the 20. How come that we have not been able to share even knowledge about how to raise cocoa in Ivory Coast and how people also produce cocoa in Nigeria? Mm. The prosperity that comes out of, uh, out of cocoa markets in East Africa can ripple to, the, to, make, to create economic liberty and prosperity in West Africa. And the aggregate of that will be the prosperity on the continent of Africa. It, it's not rocket science. Let's see here. We have a question in the chat room. How does uh, Congressman Bimbo feel about the diaspora, those of African descent, joining the African Union as an ethnostate? I, I honestly, I hon again, that's a perspective that somebody has shared with me. And I totally, it was, okay, fine. Let me give you a small story. Mm -hmm. While we're trying to get um, um, uh, the buy-in of some voices on the continent of Africa, people who still believe in uh, Pan-Africanism, I had to, I, myself and my team, had to meet with President Thomas Sanjo. And he said to me that all our initiatives, which could, I mean, you, you may take your time to actually look at, uh, check our website and see what those initiatives, there are nine of them. All our initiatives to further this, this core objective he wanted to bring somebody from Jamaica mm -hmm. who would have been the keynote speaker at his birthday because he said to me that diaspora Africans were already feeling like left out. I mean, this is a common cause. I honestly feel that we will, the pan-Africanism mentality, I mean, uh, the pan-Africanism philosophy we suffer great injury if we begin to exclude our brothers from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. And you would know that some of them are beginning to find, to trace their roots to some diff different nations on the continent of Africa. So why do we feel that we can legitimately exclude somebody who just became, and you know what they call them in the United States? African-American. Right. <laughs> right. African-American. Right. <laughs> right. You know? That's not correct. They are principally Africans. And so we must, that's one of the dots that we must connect. This is a very strong, major challenge to our generation. Let, and I've said this at different times. If this is the bridge generation, the generation between the guys of my age, 50, maybe 40 and 50, from 40 to 55, that is the bridge generation. If the guys between the ages of 40 and 55 will not take this banner and hold it aloft, I guarantee you, Prince, in another 10 years, anybody who is less than 35 today will not be able to tell you who a Jomo Koyata was and what right. he stood for. He will not be able to tell you who a Kwame Nkrumah said this, eh? or what he said in 1945. 
And if you don't go back, listen, it's been said and proven that a race that forgets their history will permanently be an appendage and footnote of history wherever they find themselves. Mm -hmm. So we, we have, have a number of things. Okay, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Um, uh, Congressman, go ahead. So what I feel is that I, if not for COVID, if not for COVID, we wanted to start, we had concluded our plans, and I, I mean, I, I encourage you to try to see some of the things you've done on our website, on our, on our social media handles. We've seen, we went all the way to see the last of the titans, President Kenneth Kaunda. Well, yeah. We went all the way to see uh, President Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia. And that was symbolic for us. Because we wanted to connect the past with the present. Because we are the bridge that can, that can read the two generations together. And some of those things that President Kaunda, the first president of Zambia, said, we all got emotional. I reminded him of that last meeting in Manchester, I think. He was in attendance. Kwame Nkrumah was in attendance. Zeke of Africa was in attendance. Can you imagine? One of our foremost patriots in Nigeria actually bears the name Zeke of Africa. Today, how many people are they talk when they when I see and I hear this talk about prosperity, prosperity, and economics and economics? I agree that a prosperous continent is good for us all. But we cannot be prosperous if we are this divided. I said, who doesn't know Yvonne Chaka Chaka, for instance? Yvonne Chaka Chaka traveled to Uganda, just Uganda here, and was prevented from performing. She was actually deported. Habba, Habba. On the continent. So, you want me to start watching my back if I go to Ghana? And of course, you heard that Ghana slammed Nigerian traders with $1 million uh, guarantee, guarantee bond to be able to transact businesses in, 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 in Ghana. How does that grow our economy on the continent of Africa? Right. Right, and it kind of, if, if, if we have this equals agreement, but you can't, I guess, do business in certain countries with all these restrictions, then like, what's kind of the point of uh, ECOWAS? How do you enforce that? These are conventions. Right. These are, con yeah. These are conventions. How do you enforce them? They are treaties. They are bilateral treaties. They are not bilateral. They are multilateral treaties. So, if if people are xenophobic, how does a piece of how does a piece of paper, a piece of paper, that presidents who don't believe in Africa are committed themselves to and put their signature, how does that translate into anything? Right. They go and then have these formal events and photo ops and sign off stuff and sign their names and the fine prints of that of those documents. Not the I mean the ink on the papers that they have signed those documents on wouldn't have dried up before you, a xenophobic attack breaks up in somewhere else. Uh, we, we have a question in the chat room. Uh, is Nigeria? intervening in what's going on in Cameroon at all? Are they playing a role in are they, in, in any intervention uh, in what's going on in Cameroon? Well, what is going on in Cameroon is very is very uh, depressing. Mm -hmm. Southern Cameroon and all, it's very depressing. Again, you, nations, one, 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 of, one of the articles of faith that nations have binding, I mean, around their sovereignties, around their independence is that you have to be guided in terms of how much of intervention, how much of influence you can play, how much of role you can play in terms of their local dynamics, particularly when it's political. The one thing that all leaders on the continent have agreed to, a subsisting commitment that they have, is that commitment that Africa must be democratic. And so, if there's a coup in any nation on the continent today, most likely, all of them are united in condemning that. 
But have we seen the same level of unanimity and unity in terms of commitment to a united, a totally united Africa? What is happening in Southern Cameroon, in Cameroon today? I don't like the idea of balkanizing the nation again. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, this is the Christian side, this is the Muslim side, this is, um, this is the English speaking, this is the French speaking and all of that. If our present core of leaders are as united behind the spirit of Pan-Africanism, they will be able to make that an agenda item when they get to the next day. They will not even have to wait for a U meeting to be able to strengthen that. We are Africans. We are simply Africans. Our tongue, the language that we speak, uh, listen, it is also a part of our colonial mentality. It's an heritage that we must drop that, okay, because um, Senegal got colonized by France and all of that, Senegalese are not my brother. Right. Oh, Nigeria got colonized by Britain. Oh, we are under food. That is, that is sustaining that division that right. our colonial masters involuntarily handed over to us. We are still carrying on with that heritage. I have told you, Prince, my brother, we cannot yes, survive a divided Africa. Can't. We cannot. Every time there is crisis in any of those nations, do you know what happens? It breaches the trust. All and right. then all, all organizations, all, all foreign, they call them foreign organizations, begin to run back. I don't, no, 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 no. We don't want crisis. We don't want crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are asked... basic things, there are basic no. things. Oh. No, go, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Continue. Go ahead and continue. Uh, go ahead. There's, I, I, I honestly feel and strongly so that there must be irreducible minimums from here and hereafter. Going forward from now, Prince, one of the things that we must push very strongly is to have AU, our leaders on the continent, commit in clear terms, not ambiguous, not nebulous, not obscure, in clear terms to simple fine details, fine prints, and fine details of the Pan-Africanism philosophy as espoused by the forefathers of this continent. Hmm. And until we do that, until we do that and begin to walk, it's going to be, we must walk the talk. We just can't afford to just mouth it and talk about it. When there was school, the last coup that was that, that happened in Mali. Did right. you see the response? Did you see the response of uh, of uh, our, our leaders? Not really. No, we were not. We, no, no, no. But they were. They moved in within two days. Oh, okay. When, 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 the, when, when, when the uh, uh, military, military, when the junta took oh. down a democratic government, the, the government of Bukata, I think. Uh, the president of Africa, did we, we have to hold back because Mali is a French speaking, is a Franco coalition? No. Uh -huh. That's the same spirit and gods that we must deploy, that our leaders must commit themselves to and tell South Africa, you can't kill Nigerians and tell Nigerians you can't be hostile to South Africa. Can you imagine right. how it feels that brothers are, that are doggers, as daggers drawn? Now, make no mistakes about it. There are consequences economically. There are consequences um, culturally. There are consequences politically. There are consequences in many ways. We're just talking about, I just spoke about else now. If there is no all-round inclusion of, an Afri of Africa, we will never, as a continent and as a people, be able to realize the potential. Okay, look at what is happening in Zambia today. Right. Even in Nigeria, the Chinese have taken over. Even in Nigeria? Oh! Our train, our train is totally in the hands of uh, Chinese people. Hmm. I, I would have dumb. <laughs> I would have dumb. 
no. When you get, listen, when you get to the airport, the new airport in Zambia, uh -huh. the message is written in Chinese. Right. And of course, they, there was a Chinese restaurant where a Zambian was prevented from entry. Right. There's a farm in Ogun State here in Nigeria mm -hmm. where Chinese people are farming lettuce and sending it to China to feed their population there. At a point in time, the Chinese got so drunk, so power drunk, having mortgaged the fate and fortune of generations of Africans to their loans to the extent that they wanted, they contemplated joining the Zambian police. How can this be fair? All right. 54 nations, 54 leaders, 1.4 1. 1. billion people. How about this? Can't be nice. This can't be. So we need to go back to basics. We need to review the concepts and the philosophy that our forefathers handed over to us, handed down to us. Until we get back to basics, I'm too sure that this, the fate and fortunes of the next generation and this continent is imperiled. There's no doubt about it. I am clear, it's crystal clear to me. And I'm not a I'm not a narcissist. I'm not I'm not I'm not a scaremonger. I am just telling you from today. Ask anybody who is 30. Ask them how much of Africa do they know? Africa history is not even being taught anywhere now. All right. Now we got a question. Let's see. Uh, what are your thoughts on the uh, elections in Uganda? Well, unfortunately, um, my I have two positions on it. Okay. Position one, speaking for myself. Position two, what we have discussed at the level of one United Africa. I believe Brownie, um, the young guy, uh, what's his name? Brown. Uh, Bobby Wine. Uh, Bobby. Bobby, Bobby Wine. Yeah, Bobby Wine. Uh -huh. I believe Bob, Bobby, Bobby Wine. I'm sorry. I believe. Um, he still needs to learn a little bit more of politics. Okay. And that's, with due respect, he still has a lot. Popularity on the ground mm -hmm. does not translate to victory at the polls. Right. You're, you're dealing with an old fox who's been in power for over, maybe about two decades, about four decades, maybe, almost. So, it's, there's no doubt about it. Some Ugandans want the present president. And there's no doubt about it. Some want the young guy. Right. But it doesn't appear to me like the guy has done enough of psychoanalysis and situation analysis of how to defeat incumbents, particularly old foxes like uh, the present president. So my suggestion would be, like I, like I posted, I commend, I salute him. It's, I must condemn in strong terms. And at a level of a foundation, we condemn in strong terms the arm, the strong harm tactics that the present president deployed to win that election. I, I would have expected that if the man, if the grandfather there now um, had, had that level of confidence, there wouldn't be need to deploy that level of strong arm tactics to win that election to the mm -hmm. extent of brutalizing the wife of that young man and some of his supporters to the extent of uh, putting him in detention and all of that. What I would advise at this time is for this guy, this young man, I think he's 34, 35, he said. Yeah, he's like 35, yes. Yeah. He's like 35, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, like I posted, he shouldn't give up. He shouldn't give up. He should draw strength from uh, uh, where in Liberia, who I'm told that is also uh, he's also missing missing his tracks now. You know, um, I think he has he has chances going forward. Okay. He should hold down his supporters. He should begin to tell them that they need to prepare for the next election from today. He shouldn't wait till one year, two years to begin to run around. As much as I, I wouldn't want to get into the local, you know, details of the politics of Uganda, 
one thing that I know is that in Africa, winning election most times is still badly skewed in favor of incumbents. Right. The sitting incumbents, particularly old foxes like the present president of Uganda, right. cannot be a stroll in the park. But one thing he can do is that he has age on his side. He has philosophy in his side. And one other thing that I think he did not do, which was very, very, very wrong, it was tactically wrong. He did not externalize, he did not externalize his campaigns. You might say that, oh, Nigerians who have to vote and all of that. But this is a this is an election in an African in an African nation. I would have expected him to externalize the issues among is among the among the present president of Africa and begin to let people know the kind of picture that is unraveling in Uganda. And he may not do too much, but he will cut down the level of bravado and the kind of um, attitude of devil may care approach to winning that election. So I will expect the guy to go back to drawing board, let him reach out to other parts of Africa, let him begin to isolate the issues, let him begin to identify with the common masses of, of Uganda, let him begin to distill his vision into nuggets that they can take to the extent that the commitment of Ugandans behind, behind that philosophy, a shared philosophy, that is the way to defeat old foxes. You can't just defeat old foxes at their game thinking that you can stand on the rostrum when, the, when indeed the state and the, and the structure of state is right in the hands of those old foxes. Now, there, there are push, there's a push or certain people agitating in regards to splitting up uh, Nigeria, you have Biafra, you have Oduduwa Republic. Uh, you know, what, what are your thoughts on that? <sighs> that's, that's, that, that, that's, that's another issue. Okay, but okay. If, okay. No, 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 okay. it's okay. It's okay. I'm, I'm going to take it. Okay, I, okay, I'm okay. just trying. I, why I sighed was because in one breath, we're talking about the global, the global picture of Africa. Right, right. But right at home here, we still have our issues. Right. I believe very strongly that that's one of the things that uh, uh, a united Africa will most likely have also helped us somewhat to identify what the issues are and to deal with them. I honestly don't think anybody should feel that the challenges that our brothers, who the guys from the East, the Southeast, um, Nigerians of uh, the, the Nigerians of Southeast Extraction, the Igbos, and the Yorubas, the legitimacy of that agitation can only be validated when you look at the fact that there's a structure that seems not to be delivering or meeting the expectations of that of different zones. And what I will expect is somebody has said it before that no nation survives two civil wars. And I hope and pray that I am not an advocate of restructuring in the manner in which it's being contemplated. Right. Some people have taken it to the end of the spectrum that we should rip this country into parts. I honestly wouldn't go that route with anybody because there are thousands of arguments to defeat cutting Nigeria into or ripping Nigeria into splinters. We have everything to lose if we do that. It's a destructive path to take, and I will not go on that route with anybody. The potentials of, 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 of this nation can only be annexed and invested if we realize the beauty of our, of, of, of our diversity. I believe that, that when President Mandela was alive, mm -hmm. President Mandela had reasons to travel to Nigeria and mediated on some of our local realities here. That's what that's what Pan-Africanists do. They don't impose themselves, but they pull you within hair shot and tell you, oh, I'm, I think we should be sensitive to this. Why don't you try and look at this? When, when, when um, Abacha, President of, um, General Abacha was the, was the head of state, yeah. President Mandela had reasons to have discussions 
to say, no, I mean, why do I, it's, it's old fashioned now to begin to talk about military rule. Why don't you, con why don't you consider turning over, this go turning over government back to the sea? To civilian, to civil rule. Those are the kind of pieces of advice that brothers share with brothers. All right. We can we cannot we cannot see we cannot continue to um, appropriate and and feel that oh okay Nigeria exists. If Nigeria goes down today, there will be so much of crisis on the continent of Africa. And it goes without saying. One out of every five five black men is a Nigerian. Mm. So it would make yeah yeah yeah. So yeah. it would make a lot of sense for uh for the other fifty four presidents to be able to say it's just it might, let's let's contextualize it like this. Let's see Africa as a village. I don't know how much you know the concept of a village, Prince. No, no, but no. the concept no. of. <laughs> The concept of a village, the concept of a village is that the business of every the business of everyone is the business of everyone. Right. So if we adopt that on the continent of Africa, I reckon that I think strongly that we better be a lot better for it. Uh, so what we'll do, we'll, we'll start closing out. Um, Congressman uh, uh, Neromola, if you could share with everybody uh, your NGO, and it gives people uh, some background information in regards to uh, your scientists and you know all the uh, awesome work that you're doing in uh, Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much, um, um, Prince. Um, my name is Bimbo Neromola. I have a first degree in uh, geology, and I've gone on to do a master, also get a master's in business administration. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I've been a banker before, and um, uh, I am I am I am somebody who feels that if we can do something about it, let's just do it. Right. I honestly don't feel that if there's this challenge, we can we all, we need just to throw up, put our hands up in the air, our hands up in the air, and feel that we can let it go. That's the motivation for me. That's the thing that drives me in my country in Nigeria here when I was in the parliament. I will also encourage you to check www.bimbodramola.com and also you will see the kind of contributions that I put up there. Um, as at the last last check, I think the answers of the house show that uh, I had over 40 motions and about, uh, about I mean, I sponsored well over five or six bills and some of them went on to become laws and then co-sponsored others. I also, um, I've been able to do a few things um, with regards to empowering young people. I'm very strong with empowerment of young people. There's a project that we're running right now that has to do with how to change the entrepreneurship develop, de development matrix of, of this country. What we do here, what we've been doing either to, has been to just throw money at people and all of that without requisite information and understanding of how people can start businesses and turn them to enterprises that will survive the 18 months window of death. So I'm also very, very concerned about how Africans can be prosperous. But I, I don't want people to mask their, their proclivity for economic exploitation and then mask that by, by, by uh, giving the impression that they care about Africa when indeed what they care about is how to exploit Africa. I, I feel when, when we saw the challenge of xenophobia, and the fact that it's recurring, it's almost becoming something that everybody is accepting. We're almost accepting it that, oh, okay, yes, it will always happen and all of that. And I said, no, no, we can do something about it. And I tried to identify some of those things. And I called people of like minds together. And there are a number of like minds from South Africa, from Ghana, from uh, Zambia, from a number of places who have keyed into that vision. We intended to start with the one United, the 1,000 man march, one United Africa project that will have gone right around Africa. To be able to sensitize first and foremost, we must be able to create the awareness before there's a buy in. If you check www.oneunitedafrica.org, you'll find some of the things we've done there. I believe very strongly that the challenge, xenophobia is one thing that, that all of us that just came out of the blues. I've been to South Africa like five times in my life, and I know how warm people could be in South Africa. And I don't know how we let it go, why how we drop the ball that things are things are beginning to fall apart like that. But I felt that, and alongside the guys I'm working with, 
I felt very strongly that if we don't rise to stop this rage, uh, this tide is going to consume everybody. You never can tell when you're going to be in Ghana or in Morocco. Oh, that's one of the challenges. That, that's one of the perspectives that people have also raised with me. How are you going to reconcile the guys who are in North Africa with the guys who are in West and who are in uh, uh, and West, Central, and East? But those are just defined details. The issue is that we found ourselves in the horn in the black continent and we must be able to find ourselves, go back to the ideals that our forefathers espoused. So um, this this is who I am, and this is the first this is the, this is the vision that I have, and it's burning inside. If not for COVID, we would have done some very we have gone so far and taken some far, we would have put some continental leaders on the spot about how to ensure that we revert back to where we started on the continent of Africa. I, I'm, I mean, without, without, at the risk of sounding immodest, our initiative would have kick-started that philosophy again. And I believe, let nobody kid you, there is no way forward until we find our ways back to the art philosophy of Pan-Africanism, where Africa will truly be united and remain one indivisible continent that cannot be divided by tongue or geography or indeed social profile. Uh, Congressman, do you have time to take uh, two callers? Oh, okay, fine. I can do that if I can do that in five minutes. Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll do one then. All right. Uh, go back to that. Go back to Africa. Go ahead. Now, do we lose him? Uh, hold on. Let me see. You there? I, I think I think we lost him. There. Okay. Okay, then we got one more caller. Uh, ah, Ezo. I sent you the link, so we're waiting for you to call in. Uh, yeah, he's, the brother's not working. So we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and close out. Uh, Congressman Daramola, Daramola, thank, thank you so you. much. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, it it, it really means a lot. And, you know, we'll definitely, whenever you want to come on, just let me know. And thank you very much, Francis. I look forward to seeing you in Nigeria in August. I'm coming in August. I'm coming to Abuja. I'm coming to Abuja in August. I'll be there. I'll, you have my, you have no. my work. I'll be there in August. I'm looking forward to seeing you. My eyes are on you. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, thank sir. you. Thank you very much, priest. Nice no talking problem. to you. Stay well and stay out of trouble. I will stay out of trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Bye. No Bye for now. All no right. Problem. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Uh, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, family. Dynasty Mirror Search for Huru. Peace.